So developing a good open guard is one of the most important aspects of your jiu-jitsu game, but a lot of people struggle with it. So this video, I made a list of the most important principles that I think will help you really speed up that process. So the first rule for developing a good guard is focus on making your defense not based off of any particular guard. A lot of people, their defense in their guard comes from the position they're in. So if you're newer, you feel comfortable when you're in closed guard because the guy can't get out. But once your guard gets open, you start to get in danger and you feel in trouble. Maybe if you're a little bit more advanced, you start to get your defense based off of common open guard. So you have double sleeve or collar sleeve and you feel comfortable once you get this grip. But when you have no grips, you feel in danger danger. That is an indicator that your defense comes from your guard and not your core retention ability. So you really want to focus on uh, being able to defend your guard without having grips. So you should get to the point that you can trust that if you have no grips and he starts passing, that you have the ability to block and frame and have good mechanics of retention. And as you get good at this, then when you develop guards, you're going to learn to put those on top of your fundamental framework of guard defense. So the second principle is always build your guard from a distance. The main aspect of your defense is your ability to keep a range from your opponent. So if I'm far away and somehow he passes my guard, I have a lot of extra space to try to reset the position. It's very similar to boxing. The more distance I have, the more safety there is. So when I'm engaging in a grip fight, a lot of people, they stay very static here. So as my opponent approaches and I build grips, he gets really close to me. So if I mess up on my guard pull and I do something wrong, I'm already in a bad position. So whenever I'm building my grips and I'm sitting up, as he gets close to me, I always watch the distance distance like this. So I build from back here. I don't stay too close. So now if I get my grip, I can fall straight back to my grip. And even if I mess up from here, I have a lot of time to try to come back and save the position. So the next rule is never have two shoulders on the mat. So when I'm defending my guard and I'm on my back and I have to defend from here, I want to create space, but a lot of people, they put both of their shoulder blades on the mat. When you have two points of contact, it's hard to spin and move, which makes it hard to keep my opponent in front of me. And also it's harder to slide and move because my back is flat. So whether I'm in the center or on my side, I never want to let two shoulder blades touch. So if I'm here, I can just do a slight crunch and I lift at least one shoulder blade up. If I'm on a side tilt like this, I have at least one shoulder blade up, and this makes it much easier to move and be mobile as I play guard. So the next one is paying attention to your leg tracking and managing your distance, uh, alignment, and elbow knee space. So when I'm defending from my guard, there's three main things I have to worry about from him. One is I have to keep him far to keep the distance for safety. Two is I have to worry about alignment. If he starts to walk this way and my legs get out of alignment, now I can't keep the space because my feet are pointed the wrong way. So I want to keep my feet pointed at him. That's what alignment is. The third one is elbow knee space. So if he gets around my guard and my elbow and knee is together, it's hard to finish the pass, right? Go back. Also, if I'm out here and I let my foot get pinned to the floor, now it's hard to bring my leg back up to defend and the elbow knee is already open. So I'm always managing these three. So one main thing that helps with this is properly uh, point, uh, tracking my feet. So if his hands are in the air and he gets close to me, I can use his thighs or his hips to push off to keep space and alignment. If he walks this way, like this, I can just push off the legs and move like this. If he grabs my pants though, now if I try to push off the legs, he can move my legs out of the way. So whenever he grabs my pants, instead of pushing on the legs, I go to the biceps like this. So now if he starts walking this way, the feet and the biceps will track. If he goes the other way, I can track. If he gets closer to me, I can kind of scoot away using this. If he grabs my ankles, then I'm gonna use the feet and the wrists like this. Same thing, if he goes this way, I can follow. He goes that way, I can follow. If he lets go suddenly, then I don't have anything to push on. I can go back to the legs and move and navigate like that. So number five is if your opponent gives you enough space, always sit up. So when I'm on my back here, right, if he's close enough to me, I cannot just sit up because there's a danger of a pass when I sit up. So I have to create distance and alignment off of his body by pushing on his biceps, his legs, maybe using my hands. But sometimes someone will be back a little bit. And if they're back so far that I can't use their body to move, he might start circling this way, for example. And now I can't keep the alignment by posting on him because he's so far back. 
Whenever I feel my opponent is so far back, it's hard to make contact on them, that's your cue to sit up. So when that happens, I just come up to my elbow, I'll immediately scoot back in case he tries to close the distance fast, and now I progress to sitting up. I always want to grip fight and sit, be sitting up if I can, because it's easier for my hands to engage the grips. So if he comes forward, I can build my grips the way I want, as well as controlling the distance is significantly easier when you're sitting up as well, because if he starts approaching me, I can always back up. If he backs away, I can start chasing him to build a grip and start building my game from there. So the last principle is build your guard off of the grips that are available, not the ones you want. So I'm always focused on keeping distance as I set my grip, and I'm gonna build my guards off of the first grips available. So if this arm is forward, I'll usually look for this first, because that's my first contact point, and from here, I can fall to the foot on the hip, to a foot over the shoulder, to a hook here. But if he approaches me and that hand is back and the other hand is forward maybe, then I'll build off of this grip first. Right? If he has both arms back and he's kind of get left forward like this, I might go for a collar, right? And if he breaks this grip, he's gonna give me this, right? Now if he's up tall and he won't get by their sleeve, I could grab the knee like this. See, and from here I could start falling back and attacking and building. There's gonna be a lot of versatility in how you choose to develop your guard, but having that core principle of developing guards off of the first scripts you get will make your game a lot easier. If you don't do that, often people will have a preferred favorite grip they like to start with. So say I like this sleeve first. If he has that back and I'm chasing it, now I allow him to get the distance and initiate on his own terms and I'm a little bit out of position. Of course, in the beginning, you're gonna develop favorite guards. That's fine. Still, if my favorite guard is that sleeve, say, but this one's forward, I'll still grab this first and maybe fall back here, and I'll play this long enough until he happens to expose this, then I might take this and then I can start building here. How you develop your guard will be very individual depending on the gym you train at, the positions you like to play, or what you watch, but these core principles will be in play in everything. If you guys like the ideas in this video, I just released a course on my website on guard retention and building an open guard. Be sure to check that out. I put the link in the description. And as always, if you like the content, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.